Rachel Notley's war on freedom in Alberta just keeps rolling on. Anything that happens outside of the city has to be controlled, managed, or even stopped altogether. And the people making these decisions about what to ban are the people who understand these issues the least. Notley's war to control fun and freedom has even mobilized people who so love nature that they're willing to spend tens of thousands of dollars on an outdoor pastime against a new provincial wilderness park. Imagine having ideas so bad that you turn outdoorsy people against a new park. That's how bad the Alberta NDP are. Now the war on freedom in rural Alberta has merged with the NDP's ongoing nanny state war on fun and has resulted in an off-highway vehicle ban in a new provincial wilderness park, a place called Castle Park near the Crow's Nest Pass in southern Alberta. It's 1,000 square kilometers of mountains and foothills on the eastern slopes of the Rocky Mountains. It's a beautiful place. Now here's the backstory. In 2014, the former PC government started planning a new park. It was to be called Castle Wilderness Park. And most people, including myself, thought it was a great idea, especially since people who actually use and enjoy the land were repeatedly assured that they could continue to use the land the way they had always been able to. Here's the government document. Look at the list of things people were assured that they could continue to do in the new park. One of the allowed activities in the new Castle Park is off-highway vehicles on designated trails. This was the government's promise to all those Albertans who used that land, and there was never any indication at any stage of the NDP's consultation process that off-highway vehicles would be kicked out. Everything was fine. But when the new park was announced on January 20th, all that had suddenly changed. Off-highway vehicle use and random camping would be phased out over the next three years. The people who actually use the park and the off-highway vehicle organizations who maintain the park were blindsided. They were going to be kicked out, even though they were told they could always be there. Even though the public consultation showed that over half of the people consulted were just fine with off-highway vehicles being in the park on designated trails. The off-highway vehicle associations say they aren't being heard, they aren't being respected, and their contribution to the Alberta economy isn't even being considered. They're concerned about the economic impact the ban will have on local Crow's Nest Pass businesses that rely on their dollars being spent there every year. A study done by the Off-Highway Vehicle Distributors Association of Canada shows that Alberta outspends the rest of the country by a huge portion on off-highway vehicles. Estimates show that there are anywhere up to 234,000 off-highway vehicles in the province. 11,000 people are employed in the industry in Alberta alone. The off-highway vehicle industry contributes between four and a half and six billion dollars to the Canadian economy. Off-highway vehicles are a big deal even if the NDP don't think so. And no normal person would want to chase those dollars away in a struggling economy, but it's typical of the NDP. The NDP don't know about these numbers because they don't leave the city. They don't understand just how much of an economic impact off-highway vehicles can and do have. They want to ban something because they don't understand it. No one they know quad, so no one must quad or something. And those that do quad, well, they're just dangerous lunatics who ruin nature or something. So now a series of town halls, town halls where no NDP MLAs are showing their faces at, are popping up all across the province. The town halls are being organized by the Quad Squad and the Off-Highway Vehicle Associations. These organizations are the ones that devote thousands of man hours and tens of thousands of dollars in infrastructure to maintain the trail systems near and in Castle. That's infrastructure and trails that they can no longer use three years from now. 500 people showed up to the town hall in Blairmore near Castle on Tuesday, and another town hall that happened at the same time in Wetaskiwin had about 50 people showed up. I talked to some of those people about their concerns about the off-highway vehicle ban in Castle. Here. I'm here tonight because I support off-road riding in Alberta. Um, I think it's, um, you know, it's, it's a right of ours to be able to enjoy our natural habitat. So um, I also am involved in the industry as a business owner and so um, you know it, it affects us the province as a whole economically and to be able to um, voice our opinion on the consultation process that has happened or lack thereof that has happened so um, yeah we, we want to be heard. It's how I keep my sanity I want my kids to be able to ride there I want to continue to go out there to fish to camp to 
enjoy it, to see why Alberta's mountains are so beautiful. Do you think off-highway vehicle users are good stewards of the land? Most of us are, yes. And just like any other group, there's some idiots out there, and we'd like to try and tone those out, not shut everything down. So, um, using a quad is something you do with your family, is that... I ride dirt bikes side by side, and yeah, my family's very involved. Do you think that off-highway vehicle users' voices and opinions were considered before the announcement was made to... Uh, to expand the park? Not at all. I think it's a great riding area, good for families, gets families together, enjoying the country, enjoying Alberta, and to restrict it to just pedestrian access, I think is really uh, silly. Like I said, it takes a lot of people out of the picture. Uh, I've invited my grandparents, they've been on trips to the mountains, and they'd never see it if they couldn't get in a vehicle and drive it, let alone walking. So I think it's, closing it is way too premature. Do you think that off-highway vehicle users' opinions were considered before the park was announced? No, um, because last year actually I was there and talked with the wardens and they said that it would be changing and we'd actually be able to ride again there and we were kind of surprised that they had left the park open because usually parks is non-off-highway vehicles, but they said it so we were quite happy and thought it was a sort of a dead issue. So when they turned around and announced this, I was totally shocked. I don't think they considered the user I don't think they considered how much money the province will lose, you lose doing this. I, I have no idea what they were thinking. Now I asked Environment Minister Shannon Phillips in an email a couple of questions. I'm just trying to get answers for these people. This is the email I sent a full day ago. I said, I have some questions for the ministry about the timeline of the decision to completely ban off-highway vehicle use in the park. When did that decision become finalized? Secondly, given that off-highway vehicle contribution to the GDP in Alberta is in the billions, was there ever an economic impact assessment done with regard to the banning of off-highway vehicles inside Castle Park? Guess what? They didn't get back to me. That's okay. You know us at The Rebel. We have our ways of getting answers and I'm certainly not going to stop until I get them. Now, last year, Notley brought those conservative freedom-loving entrepreneurs, the farmers, under her thumb with her farm unionization law, Bill 6. That law put bankers' hours and union shop rules onto thousands of Alberta farms and ranchers. And instead of that law being written by farmers, you know, the people who actually know about farming, that law was written by Notley's friends in the Alberta Federation of Labour. It was a big old thank you for all their support in getting the NDP elected. This new park and the new ban is a big thank you and a hat tip to Notley's friends in the environmental movement for their ongoing support of Rachel Notley's NDP. And like Bill 6, I understand the issues here and I don't appreciate the insinuations from the government. I'm an avid ATVer. It's what my family and I do for fun. I even file stories from the bush sometimes. And like the vast majority of ATVers and off-highway vehicle owners across the province, I love this place. I love nature. That's why off-highway vehicle owners spend thousands and thousands of dollars on trailers, trucks, and their quads and RVs just to be able to go to places like Castle Park. We want to see nature from the inside. We want to see parts of this province we can't even see in a book. And we want to show our children these places and teach our children the beauty of where we're all blessed to live. Because the best way to teach kids about how to respect nature is to actually expose them to it. Us ATVers didn't spend all this money on a hobby to see the beauty of this province just to ruin it and never be able to go back to it. I don't appreciate the implication from the province that we're not good stewards of the land or that we don't respect the places we go to. I don't like the idea that government bureaucrats that have never been on a quadding trip are making these rules about our behaviors, flat out banning us without ever demonstrating a reason why we should be banned. So here's what I want you to do. I have a petition directly to Environment Minister Shannon Phillips. It's at stopruiningfun.ca. The petition asks the Notley NDP government to keep their promise and drop their ban on off-road vehicles in Castle Park. We need to tell the NDP they don't have social license to ban us from the new park. We were there first. If you have an off-highway vehicle and you've never been to Castle Park or never even plan to, this still matters to you. Because if they can do this to Castle, then they can do it anywhere. Abraham Lake,
Cow Lake, the Kakwa, anywhere fun happens, the NDP will be there to stop it. If you don't have an off-highway vehicle, this matters because the NDP fun burglars, well, they could come for you next. Please go to stopruiningfun.ca and sign and share our petition. For the Rebel.media, I'm Sheila Gunreed. Are you tired of the NDP fun burglars telling you what you can and can't do? Are you tired of being treated like a litter bug or some sort of maniac that wants to ruin the headwaters of our rivers and lakes? Go to stopruiningfun.ca and sign our petition.